RF man here. Today I want to talk about how to design, build, and test a high quality RF sampler. So I'm going to first go through my slides and then basically show you what's needed to build the sampler and how the sampler is constructed and then finally how we can test it on the NVA. So there are many different types of samplers available. There's some that use voltage dividers, others that use capacitive coupling where you can adjust the air gap to increase or decrease the coupling. Uh, this particular one uses a toroid um, and a straight piece of coax. Okay, uh, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about the construction of this and the schematic and talk about some of the advantages and disadvantages. And we'll take a look at the materials needed and then the actual construction. So here we see the toroid. We see we have a number of windings around the toroid. Okay, this determines basically the attenuation level. And we're gonna talk about that. And then we have a straight through piece of coax. Uh, preferably, I would use Teflon coax. Um, it's more reliable when you solder um, and something like an RG303 or heavier would work just fine. Um, and then we, we put SO239 connectors on the ends and a BNC connector for the sample. Uh, so this is the basic construction. If we look at the schematic, um, we see this is the single piece of coax. We see that this is the toroid with a number of turns on it using magnetic wire. And then this particular one has an internal termination of 50 ohms. But uh, I'm going to talk about another, another method, uh, a method that I think is a little better than that. I don't use a 50 ohm termination in the samplers that I build. I would prefer to take a T and connect it on the output and then basically use a 50 ohm dummy load. Uh, this will basically be matched to 50 ohms. So you need this arrangement when you're using equipment that doesn't have an input or output impedance of 50 ohms. And we're gonna see that when we put this on the VNA and see um, how well it performs, how close it is to 50 ohms and what the return loss is and what the gain is, et cetera. So we'll get, we'll get to that after we talk about the construction. But you'll see on the internet, there's gonna be some versions that have the internal termination. And once you internally terminate it, then that's it. You have no flexibility. Using this method, you can put a T on the BNC connector, dummy load, and then connect your equipment up to the, the other side here. Okay, so that's the simple schematic. Now, how do we determine the number of turns, okay? Um, that's really the science behind this type of RF sampler, and it's actually quite easy. Um, you can determine what dB level you want, okay? And uh, I've said this in some of my other videos, but just as a reminder, uh, 10 dB would be an attenuation of 10, so it's 10 times lower. Okay, so if I have 100 watts and it's 10 times lower, it's going to attenuate to 10 watts. This would be the multiplying factor, so 100 times 0.1 is going to be 10 watts. And this is the number of turns that you would need around the toroid. Okay, and how is that determined? Well, it's a very, very simple equation. You take the amount of attenuation that you require and just take the square root. So this particular one that I'm gonna demo today, it basically is a, a 30 dB attenuator. That basically would be a thousand times lower than the input signal. Okay, here's your multiplying factor. Here's your number of turns. You just round it up and down to the nearest, closest whole number. So that would be 32 turns. Okay, and you're gonna come very, very close to the 30 dB. Um, maybe it's 29, maybe it's 31, but it's not that critical. Okay, and then you can go 40, you can go 50, etc. So here's the simple equation. Just take the attenuation level that you want okay and then take the square root and there's your number of turns now i'm finding for a lot of my equipment 
uh, 30 dB attenuation level works really well with a spectrum analyzer, for example. And then, of course, all spectrum analyzers have their own internal attenuation level that you can set as well. So between the two, yeah, um, I'm testing power supplies uh, well above 1,000 watts, and this seems to work very well. I have another one that's a 50 dB. I don't use it that often, um, but uh, it's just as easy to construct. They're all pretty much the same. So that's the simple calculation. And then here's the 30 dB RF sampler. Okay, this is a picture of the sampler that I'm going to show you. And uh, what do we need to build this? Well, we need some 20 or 22 gauge magnetic wire like you see here. Um, we need a toroid. Okay, something that will fit around the coax. Um, I put a piece of heat shrink around my coax to get a little tighter fit. I've seen where uh, tie wraps are used on the left and right side. Um, of course, this is going to be much tighter after you complete the number of windings, which we said for 30 dB would be 32, 32 windings. Okay, and, and it's very simple. What you do is you just take your magnetic wire and you go ahead and you start turning it um, in this direction. It's, the directionality is not that important. Um, but you make a very tight, even, uniform loops and just just count the number of loops as you see there and work your way around so not too difficult and then when it's all wound up it gets inserted around the coax cable like so all right and then we're going to need a couple of so 239 connectors uh, these are chassis mount and then a bnc connector now i've seen this where the bnc connectors were used um in all three positions that, that's strictly your preference and then you'd have to use some some adapters i like to use the bnc on the sample side because i've got a lot of bnc cables and all my equipment is bnc for 50 ohms so that's typically uh, what i would put on the sample side and then this allows me to connect directly to my radio equipment my amplifiers etc okay and then you need a case i'm gonna just Kind of pan down here, and you can see this is the case that I that I've used. Um, it doesn't have to be that large. Um, something that will provide shielding, and then of course there's a little bit of work to do with the drilling out for the SO239, drill out for the for the BNC connector, and putting it together with screws, etc. Um, but that's what the basic construction looks like. Now, what do we need to know? Well, you can see that we wound the toroid here, okay? And then we connect one side to ground, one side to the BNC connector. I've seen where decoupling capacitors were used here for noise, uh, but I found that's really not necessary. And then it's a straight through cable, so you connect from this side of the SO239 to the other side here. If I can get that in view of the camera right here. Okay. And then you can see the heat shrink tubing that I've added there just to make this fit a little bit tighter. And then only one side of the coax is shielded. Okay. This forms a Faraday shield and reduces the coupling, capacitive coupling between the conductor and the windings on the, on the toroid. Um, so this helps with the higher frequency performance. So there's a picture of it. I'm going to go back to the schematic here. Okay, you can see it's very, very simple. Um, we have our coax. We're terminating on both sides of the SO239. We have our toroid. We, we wind our 32 turns on the toroid, we connect that to the BNC, and then we basically have everything grounded, and we only ground, as you can see by this dotted line here, we only ground one side of the shielding or, or the braid of the coax. And that's, and that's basically it.
So that's the construction. I'll just go back and let you take a look at mine a little closer um, so you can see how it's constructed. Um, but again, it's a relatively simple design. So we're going to go ahead now and test this on the BNA and see how it performs. All right, so now I'm back. Uh, before we go ahead and sweep this on the Nano VNA, I just wanted to talk a little bit more about the ferrite core. Uh, this is basically an FT50-43. So the 50 is the size and 43 is the material. Now, in order to get the type of frequency response that you're going to see on the VNA, I'm recommending that you use material 43. Okay, so let's take a look at the setup. Here's the Nano VNA. We're going to be looking at the results on the software. Okay, so we're going to look at the Smith chart, the return loss, and then the SWRs, and also the gain. Okay, so we have it set up. Port 1, okay, is connected to the input. This is the side where we have the shielding of the coax terminated to. Okay, and then this is the output. That's terminated to a 50 ohm load. So this is just straight through, straight through the coax. So we should see it very, very close, if not exactly 50 ohms. Okay, and then we're going to take the output side. This is the sample side here, right? Remember, it's a 30 dB sample. Okay, and we're going to connect that to the second port, which is S11, and that'll allow us to see the gain and see how flat the response is over frequency. So this is what it looks like here. I am sweeping between 1 and 50 megahertz. So that for ham radio guys, that would be basically 160 meters all the way to 6 meters. I have tested this and found that it will perform up to about 100 megahertz um, and with reasonable results. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, just bear with me here. I'm trying to do all this one-handed. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, and sweep this again so it refreshes and updates. And you can see the S11, which again is just straight through, is very, very close to 50 ohms. Remember the center of the Smith chart is equal to 50. So that's reasonably uh, close to 50, 50 ohms. And... The next chart shows the return loss, okay? This is the center of the band, so I'm at about 25, 26 megahertz. And you can see the return loss is better than minus 30 dB, okay? And it ranges from a little more than minus 40 to um, around 28. So good performance, good, very good performance there. Anything that's uh, minus 25 dB, um, or more is is a is a good design. It's a good design. I'd be happy with with that. Now I'm going to scroll down, and we'll take a look at the other two charts. Just bear with me here a moment. Okay, and this is our SWRs. Again, sweeping from one megahertz to fifty megahertz. We're at about the center of the band. And we can see that the SWRs, I'll just read it off the chart here, it's 1.047, okay, so call it 1.05, okay, and then you can see on the low end, it's a little lower, on the high end, it's a little higher, but that's excellent performance. And then this one, this is the gain. So let me just explain a little bit about how the nano VNA or any VNA works for that matter. Um, this is sending out a signal out port 1, okay, and it's being sampled on this side at minus 30 dB, okay, and then it receives the sample back in to port 2, which is S11, and this would be the gain. So what we want to see is, is the gain flat over the frequency, okay, so it's at minus 36 dB, and you can see it um, goes, rises up a little bit, okay, but... Um, yeah, it, it's very flat. The performance is, is very flat over the, uh, the frequencies that we're sweeping at. 
So this performs very well. And like I said, it's already matched to 50 ohms, as you can see here. Um, and that's why I have no internal termination. And if you're using this with equipment uh, other than a 50 ohm input or output impedance type equipment, then you can use the T and the 50 ohm terminator. So the next thing we're going to do is just take a look at, uh, say, a modulated signal on the oscilloscope. All right, so now I'm back. I'm going to be testing the RF sampler with my Kenwood radio. And I'm on the 40 meter band, basically 7.08 megahertz, as you see there. And I have the radio connected to the input side. And the output side is going to my MFJ dummy load, you can see under the bench there. And then I have the sample side connected up to my analog oscilloscope. And you can see here, since the scope is not 50 ohms, I'm using, as I said earlier, a T, and I'm terminating it to 50 ohms with a small 50 ohm dummy load. And I'm going to be transmitting at uh, pretty low levels of, of power. Okay, and uh, we can basically monitor the, the uh, modulated signal in sideband. So let's take a look. Audio, audio, audio. Check, 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 check. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Audio, audio. So you can see there that uh, it's working really well. CQ, CQ, CQ. You can see it's capturing a modulated signal. I can use this with uh, my oscilloscope. I can use it uh, without the terminator, with my spectrum analyzer here, and the other equipment that I have in my shack. So that's it on the video. I hope you found this interesting. RF man, thank you.